What's up guys? Uh, welcome back to SHIELD University. Uh, today, uh, let's start off with safety first. Always make sure you shut off the power. In my case, it's uh, this plug here that I have wired to the outlet, uh, to the transformer. In your case, you'll have a uh, on-off switch near the furnace or air handler. Make sure you shut it off. Um, and I highly recommend this is only for um, professionals. So uh, hopefully it helps. Hit the like button and subscribe, please. If uh, hopefully you pick something up from the video. Someone actually requested the setup. So today the video is about how to wire a smart thermostat with an air handler and a Takeo zone uh, zone panel. Uh, so let's get started with, in this case it's an Echo B. So if you haven't, you'll get a better idea if you look at the other videos. If you have any questions, look at those. If not, you can um, uh, send me a message or email. So we have everything powered up. Uh, zoom in here. This is going to be your, this is going to be your air handler equipment inside your air handler. This is what you typically typically see in uh, most uh, modern air handlers. First company, uh, ADP, this is what you're going to see here. R, C for common, G for the fan, W for heating, Y for cooling. And uh, most of these uh, hydro air handlers have a, a TT. And uh, for the thermostat, you're going to have a Y for Y1, G, in Echobee's case, uh, we go from the newest model, you go from R to, to RC. So R goes to RC, G goes to G, Y goes to Y, and then you have common here, C, and then a W. So you can disregard this transformer too. This transformer here goes to these two wires. This is just for the training purposes. Your air handler or your furnace is going to have its own transformer and power 24 volts built in into the control board. Just so you get that out of the way so it won't confuse you. So, uh, so your air handler is right here. Um, so let's say uh, let's say you have a call for for uh, for heating. Uh, let's put this back. Sorry, this is not planned or anything. I just we shoot as we go. So I'm gonna let this load. Here we go. So we're gonna go to system, it's in heating mode. On. So we're gonna raise the temperature to 76. That's gonna close, um, the thermostat is gonna close the internally from R to W. So let me just show you an example. This is all the thermostat is doing. It's bypassing R to W. So the air handler and the control board, it's gonna it's gonna know it's smart enough to know to close a relay internally right here. TT. Internally that's now don't open these modern uh, air handlers never apply voltage to the TT. It's a dry contact. All you're doing is basically all the air handler is doing internally is closing the switch here, like bypassing it, and then it's going to energize zone one. Can you zoom in here? Oh, 
RNW. And never apply voltage to RNW because you're going to fry the board. Or if you apply voltage to the TT, you're going to fry the board on the air hanger. So let me de energize it. Let's say, let's say uh, the thermostat hits set point, it's satisfied, it, does, it no longer needs heat. So we're going to remove the RW and it de energizes the, the internal relay for TT. You then de-energize the control board for zone one. You, you de-energize zone one, and it no longer has it on the uh, LED, and in turn it will de-energize the circulator pump. So it's pretty simple. You're not going to see obviously most of the time you're not going to see the zone panel near the air handler. Sometimes you will in boiler rooms or mechanical rooms, but just picture this this wire going to the air handler. It's, from the air handler to the zone panel downstairs or wherever it is, to the walls. So that's the easy, that's the easy setup. They, the air handlers and the manufacturers already made the setup a lot easier these days uh, to work with uh, the hydro boilers, hydronic boilers. So hopefully you understand the concept. Now, um, it gets a little trickier when you don't have a TT, when you have an older air handler or some air handlers don't have, or you have an external hydro coil, you need a relay. If the air handler doesn't have, if the air handler is only for cooling, but you have a hydro coil in the duct, you're going to need a relay. So let's work on that. Give me one second. So So we're going to remove these wires. Sorry about the setup. I'm working on getting a small furnace or an air hanger. I gotta get one in here. But I haven't run into like a 40,000 BTU furnace so that I can put it in here. Or one a ton to have air hanger. Uh, so let's get, let's, let's see what we're gonna do with this. So zoom in here. So let me just remind everyone about how this relay works. Can you see this here? Is it visible? Okay, so you have white and blue and white and yellow. Yeah, white and yellow is common. This is a coil in here. This is what energizes or degenerate, uh, de energizes or opens and closes these switches. So these are the ones that are going to go to your um, your R and W. No, your W and common. Sorry, W and common.
that's where it gets a little trickier and you have to do a little more wiring Okay, so white in, so this is a rib relay. You can find these at your supply house or online. Uh, so white and blue, white and yellow um, is the coil inside the, the rib relay. Then you have this normally open and normally closed switches, which normally open is orange and yellow. These two we're not going to use; they're normally closed. You, you'll use you could use these in different applications, breaking a uh, circuit. Um, we're going to use. orange and yellow so let's go to zone two So R and W. Some the older zone panels don't have a common here. Now they have a common. Uh, so R and W is what's gonna. Um, once you have continuity from R to the R and W, your zone is gonna energize. So um, and again, never apply voltage to. The zone panel or TT, but uh, and also when you're looking at in a normally open, that means that the relay, the coil in the relay is not getting power. That's what normally open. Once it gets power, it's gonna be, it's gonna, the switch is gonna close. Zoom in here in the little schematic. Normally open and O, the switch here, the little schematic. You see this little gap, there's a little space in between there, that means it's open, normally open. And this one, there's a little ticker between the two, it's the space, that means it's normally closed. But when it's powered, when you, when you apply power to this, it's going to switch positions for both of them. So the normally open will become closed, and the normally closed will become open. Okay, so let's try this out. This is the thermostat, zoom in here a little bit. It's set for 66, so it's not calling for heat. The room is 70 degrees, so we're going to raise temperature. And the relay is now energized, which in turn closes the normally open switch, which provides continuity between Um, orange and yellow and in turn you energize your zone one so let's back up for a little bit the R and W in here this is what's happening right now when we speak inside the thermostat R and W is now closed so R it's traveling through here or through the thermostat. Hopefully you get the visual. It's going to W. One side of power is going to W. W is going into the coil, one side of the coil. 
work is being performed in the coil and then the common is coming back white and blue is going back to common uh, so when this is energized or on a call for heat W is powering the relay it's coming back to common that's your simple circuit and then your normally open is going to close and it's going to energize the zone pump, the zone pump or zone one you're also going to get voltage on zone one here zoom in so we're we're closing from RW so then we check zone one on the on the line voltage side 120 volts that would be going to your circulator pump okay pretty simple right so let's uh, de-energize it let's say your the room hit temperature it's going to de-energize both okay so let's just go a little more recap on the thermostat wiring, R, C, G, Y, common, and W. And this is like for a simple stage one hydronic heat, um, which is probably most, most common. You know, you get complicated when you have a geothermal system. Um, and then you have backup hydronic heat, or if you have forced air and uh, electrical, strips or the, whatever whoever, whatever the contractor or the engineer designed um, but most homeowners single family homeowners have either one of this setup or one for the first floor or one for the second floor you could have this tanko panel has up to four zones so if you have a big house you can have let's say a 250,000 BTU boiler with four zones four pumps and four air handlers with you can now install four thermostats um, four uh, smart thermostats in your house so remember uh, most most uh, air handlers on um, in the recent times I haven't I haven't run into something where I have to use a relay for hydronic unless uh, it's an external hot water coil then we have to use a relay in the past five years, uh, most air handlers now have the, the hydro coil built into it, so they usually have a TT. So I think that basically wraps it up. Let me know if you have any questions, um, and don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you.